Hey, everybody. Um, just before jumping into anything, I should let you know I'm, I'm a little shaken up, almost felt like puking before filming this video, if I'm being honest, literally jittery. Uh, you know, there are certain topics that over the years have been just too scary for me to broach because they've been personally extremely difficult for me emotionally and they've also caused me a lot of real world consequences and I, I never know what talking about them publicly is going to do to my life and my family and this is one of those topics um but it, I, I always find it makes me feel better when I actually just talk about things openly and honestly regardless of the consequences like the the stress and the weight of it all it's almost like therapy telling the truth it's literally just therapy itself right um I get less gray hairs when I just openly speak about the things that are disturbing me and the feelings that I'm having. And one of those things has been uh, what is being done to Brittany and Martin Selner. I've gotten a lot of questions over the years, Lauren, why don't you talk to Brittany anymore? Where is Brittany? Why did she stop appearing in your videos? And I don't know how many of you guys have been following my work over the years. I know uh, my first video posted on this channel was posted in like 2015. So I'm sure there's some of you from back in those days. And then I've got a lot of new people who may not know who or what I'm talking about. But when I was uh, in my earlier 20s, uh, particularly when I was 20, 21, I had a very good friend, Brittany Pettibone. And we went and we covered a lot of topics on immigration in Europe. And she went on to marry an activist from a group called GI, Generation Identity, named Martin Selner. I actually introduced them. Um, and they're very happily married with, with a child now. But um, the group that Martin was a part of, GI, got cracked down on hardcore by the governments in Europe and the US. They got like designated a terror organization or something, extremist group, right? Now, I, I don't know of them to have partaken in any violence. I don't think there's ever been any proof of that. But this the point is, I don't care what you guys think of this group. You can hate it. You can like it. Uh, that's not what this story is about. Um, this story is about the how the government works and how they meddle in the lives of ad average citizens that they feel um, are not conducive to whatever political agenda is going forward. And I think a lot of people, you know, they see these political figures like me or Brittany or Martin or people I've known in my past, uh, like Kaylin uh, Robertson, and they go, well, that person's left wing, that person's far right, that person's this, that. And they look at me, why are you friends with that person? Why are you talking to that person? That, uh, and I would just caution you to remember these are real people in my life that I've loved regardless of their politics, whose futures I'm invested in regardless of whatever ideas they may have, whether I disagree or agree and whether you as the public agree or disagree with them. Like these are real humans that I had real friendships with. And Brittany is one of those people. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, it's like really hard to get out of my system. And the reason I'm, I'm kind of finally going to talk about this today, uh, what happened to Brittany and I's friendship and our public kind of relationship is the other day there was a story that came out of Europe. It went kind of viral. Uh, Martin Sellner had been arrested in the middle of one of his speeches in Switzerland, I believe. It was full like, you know, SWAT team kicking down the door. Uh, turning off the lights, grabbing him and dragging him out, and it was pretty insane. He was just giving a speech on the idea of remigration, which once again, agree or disagree, uh, I think he should be allowed to talk about ideas that are nonviolent, you know? Um, and then he was also banned from Germany for three years. And whenever I see stories like this, it, it brings up a lot of emotions for me because I'm always, I've got this little thing in the back of my head that's like, I, I can I talk about it? Should I talk about it? Um, I hope they're okay. I hope Brittany's okay because I love her as a person. But uh, it, it's always this internal struggle because quite frankly, I have dealt with extreme psychological torment at the hands of the government for being friends with Brittany and Martin. Um... You know, I'd always been on like the questioning lists when I went in and out of countries. And um, 
it wasn't it wasn't a huge deal to me you know pre 2019 pre 2020 if i got banned from a country because it's like i've got home i've got my friends overseas can come and visit me right but when i when i got married and had a kid i suddenly had this tie to an overseas country australia where uh, the people I loved and the family I wanted to have w- was there. Um, and if I wanted to be able to travel between Australia and Canada, where my family members were, my my family, you know, like my core family, my parents, my sister, and, you know, a family I'd married into, well, I needed to have the ability to travel back and forth, right? And that part, if you've watched a few of my older videos on this, I've discussed how the Australian government made me quit politics in order to be able to immigrate there whatsoever. So I just had to shut down, you know, my channel and everything I was doing in order to live there. And I was uh, also, if you've watched some of my videos about my relationship, I was not in a good marriage. Um, And it was one of those situations where it's like, if I'm not in Australia, we don't have a marriage. So I was very desperate to make it work. Like very desperate to ensure that my immigration status worked because I'm, you know, I, (laughs) <laughs> I respect the nuclear family. I want fathers to be involved in children's lives. That, I think that's extraordinarily important. I would bend over backwards to, to make that a reality, right? And so I was doing everything fine. I'll quit my politics. I'll do whatever I have to to ensure that I've got this ability to immigrate and, and be there in Australia. Um, when COVID hit 2020, uh, 2019, 2020, whenever it was, they got rid of a ton of flights between Australia and Canada. And, um, you know, my, my options for which countries I could travel through almost completely disappeared. It, it became, there was like one flight out of Los Angeles that was like a connector flight to Australia that I could take. And I, I, when I was visiting my family back home and trying to get back to Australia in those early days, I kept trying to book this flight through los angeles but every time i would show up at the airport they would just sit there and question me for hours and hours and hours and hours as i had a newborn baby and um i kept missing my flights and i didn't have that much money right i I, like this is these are flights during covid they're costing five thousand to eight thousand dollars for these international flights because there's so few of them and i i'm sorry i don't have that kind of money to spend right so every time I'm going in and they're questioning me for hours and I'm missing my flight, it's like, literally, this is my fate on the line, like my ability to see my family, to repair my marriage, to work on things. It was horrific. All I'm wanting to do is ensure that, I, like, guys, I've quit politics. Please just like, let me be with my family. Please let me see my family. And every time I would go through, they would have the same kind of similar set of questions and a lot of them would be about Martin and Brittany and um (laughs) I I literally just this this kind of questioning session in which I'm asked they'd always ask me like when was the last time you spoke to Martin and Brittany when was the last time you spoke to Martin and Brittany and this questioning session of that type uh, only ended a few months ago towards the end of last year Uh, I finally had to stop doing secondary screening for whether I was basically in contact with Martin and Brittany and um, yeah so I just I kept getting rejected and rejected and I remember I have the document right here I'm like just begging them I'm like please just let me see my family and uh, I have some of the questions you know uh, just asking me about generation identity uh, what is your friend's name and her husband Brittany Selner uh, and Martin Selner do you maintain contact with either Brittany or Martin Selner? And I made the grave mistake here of saying, well, I have, but it's been months and only Brittany, but only via phone or text messaging. But believe me, it's it's only been about being married, having babies. Uh, we haven't seen each other in person in a while. Like I'm sitting here having to convince the government. Like I haven't spoken to this person I love. I swear I haven't talked about politics. Like I swear. We just talked about our babies and it's like, cause I know I've done these questioning sessions so many times and every time they're like, when's the last time you spoke to them? When's the last time you spoke to them? Um, when was the last time you had any type of phone communication with either? Uh, maybe last month, Brittany asked about my baby. Um, and these were, yeah, sorry. Whew, it's like so hard to talk about because 
they they rejected me after hours and hours and hours of being in there and then I went again and they rejected me and uh, for over the last few years, over and over again, it's been the same Brittany and Martin, Brittany and Martin, Brittany and Martin. They're the flag that's like been on my passport. And I came to a realization that like I was going to have to convince these people that I was not that, like truly convince them that I was not in contact with Brittany and Martin ever if I was going to be able to see and, and be with my family. And I will never forget having that conversation with Brittany where I called her up and I said, Brittany, they're not going to let me see my family. <laughs> they're not going to let me see my family if we're still talking. <laughs> and she, we both cried. We both cried and just said we love each other so much. And she's like, I completely understand, Lauren. I completely understand. And, you know, just for this is just the way the world is right now. And um, we're going to just love each other from afar. And this was one of my best friends. <sighs> that was like, I don't know, three, three years ago now. We're just going to have to love each other from afar. And we'll both know the whole time that we care for each other. And we hope our mom lives and our babies are doing well. And I know she, she knows that. And um, finally, after a certain period of time, when I was able to convince them that I, no, you know, go through my phone, you can check, I haven't been talking to them. They, they started letting me travel again, but every time, it still, like for years and years after that, every time I traveled, it, like I, I even remember coming back to see my family in Canada, they pulled me in and they told me they weren't going, and this, it had been a year at that point, this was like 2021, and um, they told me, we're not going to let you see, you're, you're not going to be able to take this flight. And mind you, uh, I had already had like three, four flights canceled. Um, I had missed my grandmother's death. I was hoping to see her before she died. Missed my best friend's wedding. Missed, like I was about to miss a bunch of funerals. My family hadn't seen my little one in a year. And those early years are so important. Um... They just pull me into the back room and they're like, you're not getting on this flight unless you give us every single one of your devices, your phone, all of it, and give us your passwords and let us go through it. And I just, it's like, what am I supposed to do? Go ahead. Luckily, you know, Brittany and I had been keeping to loving each other from afar, no contact. Um, they're just so violating, like the most violating thing of my life. And uh, what was crazy is it's like full... It was full like communist government stuff where the only reason I was e even able to get the flight was I knew someone in government that was able to help me uh, get my my leave, like allowance to leave the country approved. Otherwise, they, they wouldn't have let me leave with my with my child to visit my family. So I, I had to, yeah, like find someone that could help push my documents through. And then once that happened, I was pulled in and, and they took all my devices. And that, that just became like a normal occurrence in my life. Even like just over the last few years, every time I go to Timcast, I'm sat down. When was the last time you spoke to Martin and Brittany? When was the last time you spoke to Martin and Brittany? When was the last time you spoke to Martin and Brittany? Over and over and over again, as I just have to stare at these officers and tell them, no, I haven't spoken to someone that I love very much and care about. No, I haven't. And, um, you know, I, I obviously, it's very emotional for me. It's very upsetting for me because this is like my real life, real people that I love and care about. Not just like online, oh, politics, oh, headlines. Like these are, this is real life for me. But it, it's like, you think about what they've done just to me. I'm sad about it. And then consider all of the people peripherally in Brittany and Martin's lives that they're doing this to. All of the friends, all of the contacts that they constantly have ensuring that they can't be in contact with, that they can't do business with, that they have to be careful about. And I can't even feel bad for myself at all because I am just one person in a series of government interference campaigns against the happiness, health, and wellness of these two people because they have spoken up against 
the government and their migration policies. And once again, I don't like I'm sure there are a lot of people that follow my channel now that are left wing. That's awesome. Like I don't like I'm just glad you're listening to my stuff. Right. And you may be like, oh, my goodness, scary far right wingers. Just don't even think about it in that context. Think about how the government is behaving here and whether that's the kind of world you want to live in where people are being psychologically tormented and torn away from friends of theirs at the behest of governments threatened to not see their family or be able to travel, forced to give over their phones and devices, all to ensure that they're disrupting the lives of two people because of their opinions on migration. I am just one person out of many who I know are having this, had this and have had this done to them over the years. And, you know, What's crazy is like I was constantly questioned like, you know, they want info. They want info on Brittany and Martin, right? And even if let's say I had this like moment in my head where I'm like, F them, I'm going to try to like go on the government's, get on their good side, right? Uh, and then try to give them as much information on Brittany and Martin as possible. I wouldn't have anything to give. I wouldn't. Everything they say publicly is just what they say privately. Everything they plan publicly is what they plan privately. Like, there is no false persona there. There's no secret drug addict behind the scenes, secret terrorist, secret, like, racist that wants to kill people. Like, that's not, like, if I were to tell them everything I knew, it would be no different than the things they said publicly. So it's, it's you know, that I th that's what I think was so shocking, like, their desperation to find something anything on these two people and this is the american government like i know the five eyes work together like obviously european governments interpol all of those groups work together but the american government doing this doing their investigations and banning people from their country because of their opinions on migration um yeah you know uh, as i look at the arrests that martin has dealt with the uh, banning from countries and all of the lawsuits, most of which, or all of which, I think have come up with absolutely nothing. They're constantly being monitored 24 seven. It kind of makes me, I don't think people understand when you actually believe in the politics that you're pursuing and when you're actually very genuine, how much the government does mess with your life, how much they shut people up, how much they destroy friendships and relationships. This is just, once again, a normal day-to-day -day for these people. And I guess that's why sometimes it's so hard for me to watch the culture war stuff online, reacting to TikToks, and I get so tired of it, is because I know that if people were really making a big difference if they were really pushing things i know what the government would be doing to them because i've experienced it and i've seen what they do to people like Brittany and martin who really really have pushed for certain ideas and uh i don't see a lot of people in the political space experiencing those things some people do for sure but i don't see a lot of the bigger figures um, experiencing those things and it makes me wonder is the government actually worried about <laughs> any difference being made here because I know what they do to people when they think that their ideas are actually quite, you know, going to change something up that won't be good for them. <sighs> but yeah, I don't know. It's uh, been, like I said, just late last year, they took me off that secondary screening where, you know, I had to show up like so early for all my flights or I'd miss them and they just never never let me go. I'm, I'm banned from Australia entirely. They'll just never let me back. Um, <laughs> they had me on their like secret vacuum terror list. I, they, they still haven't given me like a real reason as to why I was banned. I think it's because I went back to doing politics, but um, I don't know if even talking about this. I've been so worried. I'm, I'm, I actually feel a lot better having kind of gotten that out of my system, but I don't know if I'm going to be banned again from the States for talking about it or if I'll be put on that list. I can't believe I got like four or five months of freedom of being able to take flights without uh, being psychologically tormented for information. Um, oh man, and I have some more stories about that that I could get into. But um, 
yeah, I, I don't I don't know. Maybe they will ban me again. We'll see. That'll be very interesting. I think I feel a bit more comfortable talking about it because I feel like if next time I get on a flight to the U.S. and they pull me in, that'll be a pretty big come on now, guys. Come on now. Like, it's pretty obvious what you're up to. Um, but yeah, I'd say just... In conclusion, I hope this has brought some awareness as to what's actually going on behind the scenes in the political world, why some people may disappear out of nowhere, why some people may seem cagey about talking about different su subjects, and also uh, just a, a peek into the lives of individuals like Brittany and Martin who are actually pushing for radical political change um, in a nonviolent way and how the government will treat you if they think that you're, you're a threat to them just in a social manner. And ask yourself, no matter what your politics are, is that the kind of world that you want to live in? Is that the kind of government you want to have that secretly destroy friendships on, even if those friendships are just based around no politics at all? just based around, I want to talk about our children because I love you as a human being. They destroy those friendships and won't let you travel or see your family because you talked about your babies with someone and they want to punish that person for their politics. Uh, if you think that this kind of stuff won't be done to you one day, if the government gets worse and worse and worse, which it will, uh, you're kidding yourself. And so I, I'm really, I guess this is a plea for people that are more politically safe, right? That are even on the left um, to take a look at what's being done to Brittany and Martin by governments like Germany, by governments in Austria, all of these laws and hate speech and the monitoring of them and say, and once again, like I'm telling you, the reasons that I was getting in trouble were for talking with Brittany about motherhood. Is that really ethical? Is that really the type of disruption you want being done in people's lives to keep a certain political narrative going on in the public? I don't think anyone actually agrees with that. I don't, unless you're very sadistic and not involved in politics for real, genuine, thoughtful reasons, unless you're just a really sick individual who wants to see your enemies suffer for the sake of suffering because you're twisted. I think that's the only way that you could actually agree with this. And so, uh, yeah, I would implore everyone to maybe take a look into the cases uh, around Martin Sellner, the censorship going on, the persecution, and say whether I agree with this man's politics or not, this is not how our governments should be behaving if we want to head towards a better world. Debate his ideas. Debunk his ideas if he's wrong. Don't destroy his family, his friendships. Luckily, he's got a very strong, you know, I mean... I haven't talked to them in a long time, but they've got a very strong, loving relationship and, and family there. But, um, you know, definitely doesn't help when governments are trying to just get to you at every which angle. Whew. But yeah, I really don't know how to end that other than to say, you know, <laughs> America, this isn't what I thought you were when I was growing up, and I'm sorry to see that it's what you've become. And I haven't spoken to Brittany, so do what you will with me when I come back. Brittany, I, I don't know if this is gonna be counted as a public, you know, I'm in trouble with the government now thing, but I love you very much as a person. None of the politics, all of the politics aside, it doesn't matter to me. Um, yeah. Please fight now, stand up for this stuff now, guys while you still can. I appreciate you all for watching. I'll see you next time.